are you? Welcome, Mayor. Really thank good you. to Thanks see you. For thank you so up. much. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, Anita? Lovely to meet you, Anita. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. 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 I'm Michael Delaney. He's the chair of the mayor of the company who runs the Hardwell House Gym Camp of the College. Hi, how are you? Yeah, lovely to meet you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Can we get the delegation? So, so, yeah, I get it. Yeah. 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 Every Sunday morning, we get a big group of kids, brilliant, excited kids, learning about new technology. It's really, really new. Things. So these guys are going to be, they're our tech heads of the future. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. And if I, if I may present to you, this is some of our finest chocolates from San Francisco. Uh, do you like chocolates? Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. You're welcome. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> in Cork yes. um, being the tool and stimulus to inspire kids about science yes. is going to be radioed out into space oh. and labs, which is I think the nerve center and so del I'm delighted to be here uh, on behalf of IT at Cork um, and uh, uh, IBM I want to milk, welcome the mayor and, and delegation and his family um, we're delighted to have you here um, on a personal note, I uh, also want to, for my Irish is the best, King Mila Fulch and happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Welcome and have, 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 enjoy the day. But also on a personal note, I'm, I'm very excited to be here personally, Mayor, as I was talking uh, on many, I have an affiliation with San Francisco on many levels. First of all, my sister Eileen has a company out there and family. Um, living there for over 20 years and does a lot of business with, with the city, Island Collins Design. Uh, from an IBM perspective, I ran units across U U.S. and globally. We've done a lot of business in the San Francisco area and we look forward to doing that also. And also as an American uh, living here now and a New Yorker, though I love my native city, San Francisco is always to people like myself their second favorite city. And I know a lot of Americans, <laughs> a lot of Americans do feel that way. So you're very welcome and, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. So um, I just want to talk about three things today, basically. Uh, number one, talk a little bit about what I think the mayor is doing in San Francisco from a leadership standpoint that we can all learn from. Second, what the IT European Tech Cluster is doing here, where I think we can kind of share continued bonds and grow, grow together. Uh, and third, maybe some suggestions on next steps, a little bit where we can grow, grow together. Um, so first, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about San Francisco and, uh, with, your, with your permission. Um, I think that the tone and leadership that, that's happening out there in general with Silicon Valley, but just the things that we've talked about also with ITLG, there's a general theme and tone in your area from Silicon Valley and the city, which is really promoting business, education, and, and people to come together. So, and collaboration, which is very important to get things done. So I congratulate you on that. And everything stems from that. And we're trying to do similar in this city here. Um, uh, for example, I, it's always good to say, well, Dennis, tell me, give, give me an example of that. Uh, whenever you can bring business and social things together, that's when you really drive great business because you can make money but still do the right thing. Uh, and one example that I noticed I'm doing there is in the recycling area. Um, uh, I know in 2009, San Francisco was the few, first municipality to uh, have universal um, 
difference of organic material from foods and things of that nature, first in America. And that led the way in 2009. And then from a business standpoint, you threw some themes out where you had um, used analytics and supply chain and, and companies like Recology and Supply Info and IBM work together to drive a smarter planet, which again, is a good thing to do when you can make money. Uh, and I've, I've seen from a, from a statistics standpoint now that 80% of the trash now from the landfill is now going to recycling and composition. That's incredible stuff, something that we can all learn from. Um, on top of that, it's the highest rate of diversion in the U.S. So having a great idea, social impact, and leading the way. So I, I commend you on that, and I think that there's IT, economics, and social impact together, which is what I love to do myself. Um, and then also you have the Roadmap 2020, where I think you're, you're trying to have um, uh, a waste-free environment by 2020. And I, and I think you're well on your way to do that, and again, I commend you. And we have our own plan from an IT and government standpoint here with Horizon 2020. So I think there's plans that we can continue to work together to drive a difference for all of us. Uh, and then one other, one other thing that I noticed so I think you're doing very well is in trying to redevelop areas and working with industry. In the mid-market, in the uh, Mar uh, Market Street part of town, you've, been, you've worked closely with Twitter. And you've brought Twitter in, you've worked closely with them, and that has helped redevelop the whole area. So IT has worked together, driving jobs, redeveloping an area. Again, something I, I support very much and I commend you for doing that. So, you know, leadership, collaboration, focus, results. You're, you're deploying it every day, and, and I admire it, and I, we're trying to do the same thing on this side of the Atlantic. So thank you very much, and well done. I think that deserves a clap, doesn't it? <laughs> so, okay, as I said, enough about you, what about me? <laughs> so I'll talk a little bit about our, our IT cluster, who we are, our vision, the impact we're making, and where we're going. So first of all, IT Cork European Tech Cluster is an industry-led organization, which is very important to us. Which is, in, 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 which is integrating senior government, public sector, and academia together to work together to drive tangible results economically, uh, socially, educationally, and politically. And we're doing that through many, many ways. We're 300 companies that drive more than 300 billion revenue globally, 1 billion in Ireland, and we drive a lot of jobs. We're deploying many world-class initiatives, including our groundbreaking Adopt-A-School program which right now has over 30 schools adopted by different companies doing an array of things to help them ex uh, excel. Uh, and one shining example is this institution and the Black Rock Telescope Project, which are your leading group in adopt a school and the things you're doing here, I think Galileo would pat you on the back. So, so very, very well done. And being able to reach out and globally drive that is exceptional. So, 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 so um, as they say in Irish, which I'm not a well go, but Malinoy got chucking sheet. Raise the youth and they will flourish. By doing that, you flourish, the children will flourish, and the business can flourish after. So I pat you on the back for everything that you're doing here. Well done. Um, as a follow-on to that, successful clusters are predicated on things like this. So we are an IT cluster. Again, we're academics, we're, 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 we're business leading academics, public sector and government and trying to make a difference. Successful clusters need things like this also. It's predicated on having SMEs and startups working together, multinationals like IBM working together and having foreign direct investment, um, critical pool of talent from children all the way up to adults and an ecosystem that continues to turn over, uh, critical mass of infrastructure which we continually need to accelerate with things like broadband to the last mile, not just in the city areas where we can get top notch to the last mile areas. Um, strong collaborative leadership with guys like Tim, Tim Lucy, who I commend, our city manager does a hell of a lot for us and we work well, as well as Mountain Reardon from a county standpoint. Um, so that strong collaborative leadership is very important and I think if we continue to foster leadership with, with folks like yourself, we'll continue to make a difference. Um, engaging higher education, long-term focus on educating our children in relation to science, technology, engineering, and math. All of that is an ecosystem that we need together, and that's what builds the cluster, and that's what will take us back, back to, to profit. Um, one other thing I want to note is because of those things that we're doing and that are working well, and because we have collaborative leadership working together, uh, under the leadership of Mike Loftus here, who, who I work very closely with, um, we were deploying and we've been selected by the European Union as part of Framework 7, FP7, trying to learn all the Euro European Union-ism sometimes. But um, we're going to be part of a project where the European Union will be investing called Be Wiser. And, and what that is, is in a very prescriptive, programmatic way, we will be working with five or six other clusters around Europe, sharing, learning, 
How do we work together? How do we drive business? How do we build the cluster from our children up to, the, to, to business? Very exciting. That there's seen more announcements on, on that over coming weeks. And I think the pro projects like this that we're doing will, will continue to feed into the whole ecosystem that we're doing. And I do think uh, when I get to next steps, I will maybe have put a fishing line out to a little bit more. But I do think that our cluster can also grow to the United States a little bit further than what we're doing today. So that's an exciting announcement. So segue, next steps. Um, um, well, one other thing, I had a quote here I want to make sure I use, I use quite often. Um, from the next steps, uh, from, uh, from our cluster standpoint, this project, uh, Wayne Gretzky, greatest ice hockey, North American ice hockey player of all time, which you'll probably know, one of his famous quotes was, I skate to where the puck's going to be, not where it's been. So we're going to skate to where the puck's going to be with this program, Be Wiser, and everybody's coming along for the ride together. So from a next steps perspective, President Obama in his State of the Union was talking about creating more of a, a stronger trading block with the U.S. and with Europe, and I think we need to jump on that and lead the way. Um, our cluster, the program that we're doing, your cluster, and also with Silicon Valley, um, I think if we continue to work together, and maybe even we should consider creating some type of committee or task force or joint teaming with, with folks together, where we take our cluster and your cluster to the next level across economics, education, um, social improvements. And I think by sharing that, it's good for business, it's good for the environment, we can trade notes. So I encourage us to have a discussion maybe along those lines, Mayor. And we talk about talent, infrastructure, leadership, and branding. Again, we can get economic growth, educational achievements, social enhancements. So um, in conclusion, I'd love, I'd love to do that at some point in the, in, in the short term. Shanae uh, and Am, the time is now. And, so thank you very much. Everybody have a great St. Patrick's Day and, and have fun. Thank you very much. It's perhaps not well known that Ireland has a strong astronomical heritage. Uh, some six and a half thousand years ago, an ancient Irish culture built the oldest astronomically aligned monument in the world at Newgrange on the banks of the River Boyne in the east of the country. Every year on the winter solstice, the sun penetrates a small opening above the door of the passage grave, and sunlight illuminates the chamber at the heart of the mound. It worked six and a half thousand years ago, it still works today. Roll the clock forward to circa 1590, when a small castle was built on the banks of the River Lee to watch for invaders coming up the channel. Uh, this particular castle, uh, was complete with a dome on top. Over the years, the castle was burned to the ground twice and it lost its dome. We can roll forward again to 1847, when the largest telescope in the world, and it was the largest telescope in the world, was built in the grounds of Burcastle Domain in County Offaly uh, by uneducated Irish labourers under the tutelage of the Earl of Ross, the third Earl of Ross. It had a six-foot mirror and was referred to as the Leviathan of Parsonstown. It remained the largest telescope in the world until 1917, when it was superseded by the 100-inch Hooker telescope in California, which I think is appropriate for today. If we roll the clock forward one more time, we come back to that small castle on the banks of the Lee, which we now call Blackrock Castle, and we see the dome has returned, and it is once again a watchtower. But now it's a watchtower of the skies, with 100,000 visitors to the site annually. Since the time of its construction, Blackrock Castle has seen momentous changes from the Industrial Revolution to the American Declaration of Independence, the rise of Western civilization, and man landing on the moon. For most of this time, the castle has been a patient observer, but no longer. The 21st century version of Blackrock Castle is a centre of learning, of education, of inspiration. And it is, above all, a place of vision. And what is this vision? Well, quite simply, it's to engage young and old in the amazing journey that is science, a journey that has almost immeasurably improved our lives in less than two centuries. But for all of us here today, this scientific odyssey is under increasing threats from changes in global demographics, global education, and also changes in the value placed on science at a societal level in different countries. 
The study of science, technology, engineering and maths is often referred to as STEM and Dennis mentioned this already. And let there be no doubt, it's at the core of our Western civilization today. It's what has given us our global competitive advantage and made us all, relatively speaking, rich. But it is increasingly under threat. In Asia, 20% of the population studies STEM subjects up to college level. And this number is rising. In the US, it's 7%. And somewhat shockingly in Europe, it's a paltry 2%. So this widespread low engagement and pursuit of STEM careers is an issue amongst young people and it's due in large part to a negative perception and experience of STEM at school where young people often find STEM subjects difficult or boring, where science classes fail to inspire them and they do not find that STEM resonates with their own self-perception. And this has serious implications for companies who rely on a supply of highly educated graduates in technology. It's not just an, an academic debate. Now, thankfully, astronomy is well known for its inspirational effects, especially on getting young people interested in science. Studies show that kids who are exposed to inspirational science by the age of 11 are twice as likely to consider degrees and careers in STEM-based subjects. And the best examples of inspirational science for kids comes from the astronomical community. Further interestingly, the Nobel Prize winning American economist James Heckman in a seminal 2007 paper showed that the rate of return on investment in education is by far the highest when you educate the young. And we don't Necessary. I hate when people say we don't like graphs, because I do like graphs. So on this particular graph, you can see <laughs> that the return on investment here is big if we get the kids educated young. And we have to work harder and harder as kids get older if we haven't educated them in the first instance. And I think Kota Dojo is an example of where that return on investment. But let's bring it into economics. Again, it's not just an academic uh, debate. Very recently... President Barack Obama, in his 2013 State of the Union address, said, every dollar we spend in high-quality early education can save more than seven dollars later on by boosting graduation rates, reducing teen pregnancy, even reducing violent crime. So the message is clear. Start educating young. But starting young isn't enough. Uh, and because we're in an observatory, I want to refer to a quote by Carl Sagan, who's a renowned astrophysicist, broadcaster, and science communicator, who sadly is no longer with us. But he quotes, or I quote him, every kid starts out as a natural-born scientist, and then we beat it out of them. A few trickle through the system at, with their wonder and enthusiasm for science intact, but only a few. So to stop the system, our society, from beating the enthusiasm out of kids, we have to involve society, we have to provide parents and teachers, and yes, even the bored teenagers, with an opportunity to be inspired by science, to feel part of science, to not be intimidated by science. The rather unique role of astronomy in inspiring both young and older, given that we need to get at both cohorts, was endorsed recently by the largest scientific conference organised as part of Ireland's presidency of the EU in Brussels in March. The conference was addressed by the Irish Taoiseach Enda Kenny and was championed by the Irish MEP Sean Kelly. The theme of the conference was global challenges, global cooperation. That's what we have here. And one of the key outcomes of this conference on global cooperation was to recognise the key role astronomy has in building global capacity. Today we have the pleasure of your company, uh, Lord Mayor, and your lovely wife, and we're really delighted to have you here at the announcement of a project whose main objective is to stimulate interest in science, technology, engineering and maths, to increase the uptake of these subjects at secondary and tertiary education levels, and to encourage and prepare students for jobs in the technology sector. This will be achieved using the inspirational medium of astronomy, and specifically by providing thousands of students in Cork and California with live control of a robotic telescope through a unique user interface. In this project, digital meets physical. 
real telescopes really move when commanded to do so by real kids. At Black Rock Castle, we already have significant experience of providing live access to telescopes through a program which we call Web of Stars, which we ran with the Chabot Space and Science Centre. And we know that young students involved have what only can be described as an educational blast. The new telescope that we're talking about today will be sited at Ormondale Elementary School in Portola Valley, which is outside of your immediate catchment area, but nevertheless, let me come back to that in a second. But this has been made possible thanks to a number of people. In, for example, the support of its principal, Jennifer Warren, the staff and board of the school. In Ireland, it couldn't have happened without the support of Zenith Technologies, a company who are uh, closely associated with Cork Institute of Technology. I taught all of their directors, actually, which makes me feel extremely old. Uh, and unfortunately, Jim Lehan, one of the directors, couldn't uh, be here today, or I don't see him in the audience. But Zenith have been a major supporter of ours. But the collaboration with Ormondale could not have happened without the belief of uh, a lady called Denise Tormey, which none of us had met until a few weeks ago, She's an Irish entrepreneur who has recently moved out to California. She moved out with her family to continue the expansion of her company, Planet 21, which she established with some friends from college. And I want to pay a special tribute to Denise, whom we met at the recent ITLG conference, a conference that was brought to Cork thanks to the work of the San Francisco and Cork Sister City Committees, some of whom are in the audience today, uh, and we'd like to welcome you here. And I think it's a resounding... Um, uh, confirmation of why the Sister Cities program actually is <coughs> bringing tangible uh, uh, um, impacts from ITLG through to this type of program. So I want to, in the last couple of minutes, give you an idea of what the actual project uh, is all about. Uh, this uh, gives you an idea of some of the individuals involved in it. Um, but what of the telescope project itself? Well, schematically, it's very simple that there's a telescope at the box on the top, there's a user interface, and then there's a bunch of users at the bottom. The real innovation in the project is this user interface here. This user interface uh, tailors the audience using the telescope. Now, somewhat surprisingly, this has never been done before. And what it means is that completely different audiences, from primary school kids to university professors to the general public, can use the same telescope for inspiration education and research tailored to the way they want to do it. So it's one telescope, but many experiences. As an example, if you're in Ormondale Elementary, you might just want to take a simple picture of the moon, but it'll be your picture of the moon to hang on your wall at home, or to look at with your mobile device, or share with your friends. The name the same will be true for any school, incidentally, within the San Francisco Bay Area or beyond, so schools in Ireland as well. However, in terms of San Francisco or Mary, we do need your help to make those linkages. Alternatively, if you're at a high school or university, you might want to access the data from the many sensors attached to the telescope, which provide engineering information to help us at Black Rock Castle monitor the state of the telescope. So what do you say? Well. Imagine you want to install your own sensor on the telescope. Think of how cool it would be. Think of, for example, Coder Dojoers, who we met this morning, linking from here to the telescope in California through code that they have written. And just think about that for a moment. It's real people, real telescopes, real connectivity. In essence, the telescopes become the technology test bed. One telescope, but multiple technologies. The telescope also links people initially in Cork and San Francisco. It's one telescope and it's then science and societies. The project is also intended to increase the number of students who go to take up successful careers in technology companies. And this will support economic as well as educational development. However, whilst the first telescope at Ormondale Elementary School will shortly be installed, and I think it's important to point out that it is being installed uh, as we speak, the plan is to seek additional funding to support an array of 8 to 10 robotic telescopes in California. And we have a goal here today. And unashamedly, we want to say what it is. And it's big. 
and it's important for us. We want this to be the most productive robotic small telescope array in the world within three years. We want this array to be accessible to hundreds of schools. The technology is there. All it requires is for us to continue to work together uh, to find the means of doing that. The telescope at Ormondale is intended to be the first crucial node in this array of telescopes. And when you put together an array of telescopes, I think it's important to remember one thing. The game changes hugely. You can now get into the sort of things that Dennis wants to do at ICT, but you also get into things like big data, cloud computing, photonics, coding, uh, security, networking, a whole series of cutting edge things that you can use the telescopes for as a test bed. So our vision is to build this array of telescopes, possibly, as you can see here, possibly with each one sponsored by an individual company, which will remove the need for to find this large upscale investment all in one go. And our intention is to install it on a single site where it'll be easy to maintain. With Ormondale as the flag bearer, we plan to focus on the younger students, and we will develop methods for their parents as well as their teachers to become involved because the evidence shows that all of these are key players in forming young students. The array of telescopes will also support what we're referring to as smart STEM. And smart STEM is going to become really important just like smart cities and smart, uh, smart monitoring, smart whatever it is. With many telescopes, you effectively end up with endless possibilities. You don't control the conversations. Just like in social media, you don't tell kids what they have to say to one another. Just like in Code or Dojo, you don't tell them all they have to do. You give them a facility and you allow them to use it. So in conclusion, a couple of very brief thoughts. Irish people have been looking towards the sky for millennia. Americans since the foundation of your nation. Now. Let's look at the skies together a little bit closer than we have done before. And I'd like to leave you with a final thought. On September the 12th, 1962, John F. Kennedy committed the US uh, when he spoke words which still send a chill up and down my spine when I hear them. We choose to go to the moon and do these other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Now, Kennedy could have said, we choose to build a rocket, or we choose to build the biggest rocket. But he didn't, because the vision was to reach the moon. And in setting out the vision, he generated a level of excitement that inspired future generations of scientists and engineers. So the lesson is interesting. Get the vision right, make it challenging, make it hard, and the inspiration will take you places that the vision never even dreamed of. Mary Lee, we cannot do all of this without local support and advocacy in San Francisco and everyone here in CIT, Blackboard Castle Observatory, looks forward to building on the relationships which we have already made, building on our first joint telescope uh, and we look forward to uh, future developments in that area. Uh, I would li like to invite you, Lord Mayor, if I might, by the way having said thank you and happy St. Patrick's Day, to just say a few words about the, the telescope project so that we can let these good people go and get their Irish whiskies. <laughs> <laughs>
by radio telescope, um, these images are sent at the end of the year to space. And we're very, very proud, Mayor, to have you play a part in this project using this <coughs> exciting announcement. And uh, thanks again on behalf of all of the team here at CIT Black Rock Castle. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, thank you again to Black Rock and to the Cork Sister City, to, of course, the, the Cork City Council City Manager, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, and all of the incredible institutions uh, for joining us on this great, fantastic announcement of uh, the telescope project. Uh, and of, co of course, I want to thank the San Francisco delegation for joining me in this announcement as well. And happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, this is an incredible project. Uh, it is one that, as just described, reflects the best of our intentions uh, for the Cork Sister City, uh, for our vision for our youth, for the role of science and, and technology in the way not only that we live today, but how we want to live in the future. And what I have thought of through this presentation of the uh, uh, telescope uh, was just the imagination that's behind it, uh, that the objective here is really not only to use the spirit of innovation that we both as cities have, Cork and San Francisco, but to use it in a way in which it invites the incredible imagination of our youth and of our societies to join together on a journey that has no end in it except to improve life for everybody on this planet. And whether it's zero waste that we're working on or building our infrastructures or engaging our kids in the uh, math and engineer and technology and science that we all have, uh, the objective here is really to instill in all of us the spirit of innovation that we have as human beings so that we could uh, have the best of our skill sets working to improve society in general. And this is what uh, I believe is the essence of the purpose of this array of telescopes that are being uh, put together uh, and is why we participate and why I wanted to come here as the mayor of San Francisco uh, to participate in this gathering is to make this incredible announcement that has uh, as a foundation and a purpose of exciting our youth to use science and to ensure that uh, we use the best of uh, the environmental conditions that we have in San Francisco and the state of California and allow the kids here through uh, the uh, incredible interface uh, be able during the daytime while they're in school be able to observe uh, the night visions of these telescopes that we have because of the difference in time. Uh, that's an important thing but then it just doesn't stop there. You're not simply gazing at the stars for what we and our generations had a lot of romantic reasons to do so <laughs> but to also say that it can be manipulated with additional uh, aspects of it that really increase our ability to discovery. Uh, so whether it's manipulative for uh, additional, your own pictures of where you want to see, or uh, more investigations in particular stars, or how it applies to uh, things that are moving on the Earth, or what we don't yet understand, uh, these other additional arrays uh, and monitors will allow us to do that. So. I am uh, enthusiastic about this, to say the least. Uh, and also to observe just uh, a moment ago uh, some of the youth and their applications for uh, Decoder uh, uh, Dojo is to see what their imagination can come out of. Uh, just the three very small examples that we saw a minute ago with one youth uh, looking at uh, animation. And if you can just fast forward 10 years from now, that very youth could very well be in robotics and the whole arena of helping the human body recover from injuries or make our bodies even better performing. Or another uh, child, Ruth, with her cupcake recipes. Fast forward that 10 years from now, and incredibly, you can see the ingredients she's put together and how she could be investigating uh, chemicals or different uh, pharmaceuticals to improve the human body and mind. Or another youth who had the electrical uh, instruments and trying to see if a, how she can make a light blink. 
And you fast forward her science 10 years from now, and she could be the one that prevents a whole stadium from going lights out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any of these youth, fast forward them 10 years from now, you can imagine what they're doing and how this array of telescopes can also add to that value. So uh, thank you again, the Cork San Francisco Sister City, for coming together, using science as foundation, but ultimately the goal of improving people's lives and the way we think of our lives today and how much they can be improved through that science. Uh, this is incredible and this is uh, another great reason why uh, I'm here to celebrate uh, the gathering, but also uh, to continue the work and the enjoyment of that work through the Cork Sister City. Thank you very much. Great Patrick's weekend. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. One of the closest other definitely. Close, 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 close. Take another photograph.